out there once again, Jersey Joe, I am here in the box from Las Vegas with a supernatural edition of The Brew. You know, it's a bar talk, things we'll talk about at the bar, random subjects, well this one is a super topic, supernatural that is. And the question we put out on social media, we want you to chime in is, have you ever had a near-death experience? What happened? What did you see? How did it happen? What went on? Share your stories with us right now. You can hit us up live, those of you watching live, those of you can hit us up on Twitter, Jersey Joe 50, I nice 4091, and join our conversation. Joe and I got some great stories to swap, as always. You never know what we're going to talk about. You never know what's going to come out of his mouth or mine. Joe, let's go to you first. So, have you ever had a near death experience? I have. It was really, really fing scary. So, uh, my friend and I were driving from Reno to Redding, California. This was about 2009, I want to say. Mm-hmm. It was about 10 years ago. And it was the day before Christmas. I was trying to get him home. He was a veteran. So we were driving, and uh, we were in an SUV, and we were full lying in the middle of the night, just flying. We were probably doing about 90 miles an hour. And in the in the mountain, there was a curve, and we were on ice. And so... We were going around this. It's dark. You can't see the ice. And we started sliding. And he regained control of the SUV just before we were about to go off the edge. Had we gone off that cliff, there's absolutely no chance we would have survived. It was a big, big drop. And I was scared because I was sitting in the passenger seat. And when when we regained control, I could see how far down it was and how fast we were going. And it it was really, really, really f***ing scary. Whew. Well, (laughs) I'll drink to that, you know. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I can say. What about that, you, Joseph? Well, I can say that I've had one, technically two, and uh, I shared this story with you on. Uh, we texted about this this week, so to you, you've already heard this story. But to our viewers, they don't know this. So, this is years ago. I was at my grandparents' house, and my grandfather came home middle of the night, probably drunk. Usually, he was, and somehow knocked the the gas on on the stove. So the house began to fill up with cooking gas, pretty bad. Now we're asleep. My grandmother's asleep. He eventually goes to bed and passes out, but we had this big white cat, and she was awesome. She was more like a dog. My cat, Angel, I miss her. She was awesome. And she went and woke him up and wouldn't leave him alone. She drove him nuts, like ran around the bed and stuff, kept meowing. And he's like, what's wrong? And until she got him downstairs and let, like, let him towards the kitchen. And he's like, whoa, what's all this gas? I remember waking up and like hearing like all him like down there banging like all these doors and windows. And I remember coming down the steps, and I'm like, wow, that is cooking gas. He's like, yeah, the cat woke us up. So had the cat not woke us up, the house would have either A, would have probably suffocated to death, or B, most most likely blown us up, you know, because the wiring in that house is not good. So that's my first experience with cooking gas. But then it happened again to me probably 10 years ago when I moved to my new apartment, my other apartment here in Jersey City. The building was new at the time, and I'd lived there probably three, four years. The night before, we had friends giving a bunch of us, and we had, I had a ton of wine. I'll be honest, and I pretty much liquored up the night before. Went home, fell asleep. I woke up in the morning. I was like, wow, man, I got a really, really, really bad hangover. I knew I had a lot of wine, but didn't think I had that much. So I got up, took a shower, put my contacts in and everything, didn't think much of it. I had a real hard time waking up. And then I turned the corner from the bathroom, went to the kitchen, and immediately I was oh, like just overwhelmed with cooking gas again. It was pretty bad. And I'm like, wow, where's that coming from? Now, le- what I learned the first time from my grandfather is quickly open up all the windows. That's what I did. And then I went, you pull the stove out, and behind there is like a little red lever where you can shut the gas off. So that's what I did. And I'm like, wow, where is that coming from? So I called the gas company, which, God bless them, they were there within 30 minutes. By the time the guy got there, though, I had it all ventilated out, everything was fine. And he ch- tested the hose, the connect connected like from the little nozzle on the wall to the stove is like this yellow like rubber hose and the hose they had installed the stove in when it was brand new again the apartment was brand new was defective and never sealed properly so a i'm sure cooking gas was leaking in that apartment those three years i lived there but b it finally wore through and it's probably a good thing that i had gotten up and got to it when i did because if not again same problem and for the record i had a carbon monoxide detector that never went off was full batteries i tested it and for some reason the piece of junk never went off and it should have it was in a location where it should have so it was a total malfunction threw that thing away and got another one after that too so that's twice with the cooking gas with me and let me tell you i mean i it's a good thing they put that smell in there because it's a it's a serious situation i mean if you, you smell cooking gas right you know what you know you know that smell right yeah it's scary um and i would like to say um rest in peace to my former boss he passed away a week ago today from that, from gas, yeah. carbon monoxide poisoning up in Reno. Uh, his name was John Finkbonner. I'm really sad to hear about it. Um, but yeah, it can it can sneak up on anybody. 
Yeah, don't don't mess around with gas. Now the thing is though, like I never saw like you know, I knew it was a dangerous situation and made it through though, but never saw like, you know, come to the light, the tunnel, like all that. Have you ever seen anything like that? Like how they say people see that, you know, like when you're at your wit's end? I have not, and I don't think because when you when your brain starts to lose uh power, you kinda of start to hallucinate whether you're tired, drunk, high, whatever the case is. You start to hallucinate and I think when people are in that state of surgery or, or if they've been drowned and revived, um, they kind of, they think that they've seen their body out of, out of um, like, as a spirit and seen their physical body. But I think it's just hallucinations, honestly. If you watch documentaries, and I've watched a whole bunch of them about this kind of stuff because I think it's fascinating. It's like, well, I died and came back, and you didn't really die and come back because that doesn't fucking happen. No one who actually dies comes back. When it comes to near-death experience, it's just that. It's you hallucinating because your brain starts to lose power. That's very interesting you make that point because in preparation for the show, I went and I found a Scientific American magazine article that talks about what exactly that is. And there's some fun facts I'm going to share with you about it right now. Because first of all, it says 3% of all people in the U.S. say that they've had a near-death experience. And what causes like seeing the white light and the out-of-body experience? You're exactly correct. It is when your brain function gets interrupted for a variety of purposes, whether it loses oxygen or there's severe trauma to the head, or there's actually some diseases out there too, like Parkinson's disease where it can happen pretty regularly, but what that is, is that your brain trying to stay alive and interpret images, and most of the time, it's a flat-out hallucination, whether you see the tunnel or have had an out-of-body experience. Now, I can tell you, though, when I was a little kid, and I swear to you, I had an out-of-body experience, and I'm pretty sure, though, it was dreaming, I remember being, I was a kid, probably third grade, I remember sleeping, laying in bed, and I remember, like, waking up, and I could feel, like, my back hitting the ceiling and looking down and seeing myself laying in bed, and then, like, probably after maybe, like, 20 or 30 seconds, I don't remember how long it was, I actually fell back down into myself. Whether or not it was an out-of-body experience, I don't know, it could have been a dream, I was way too young, but it absolutely was a freaky moment that I will never forget. Have you ever had anything like that happen? I have not, and that's weird to hear about, but um, yeah, you definitely weren't dead, I can at least confirm that. No, I definitely was not dead, because I had to get up and use the bathroom <laughs> after that, so no, I'm pretty sure everything, everything <laughs> Working just fine. Well, hey, I put this question out on social media to ask you guys, so have you ever had a near-death experience? Keith wrote in with a funny answer. He says, yes, it happens once a week. I call it Monday morning. Hey, I agree with Keith. Monday morning, I definitely feel uh, like a near-death experience. A lot of times, too, I will say also Sunday morning. But for me, that's generally because I'm recovering from a hangover. Yep, that's Joe, all right. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, look, you never want to have a near-death experience. Definitely, like we talk about, cooking gas is a dangerous thing. But, you know, a lot of people swear that they have, like, these unique experiences, but that's part of, like, what this conversation is about. You know, everybody has their own experience, and sometimes, you know, you feel that way, and it's, it's what you believe, and, you know, it's, it's how you interpret what happened at that moment in time. And uh, what is that fine beverage you're having there, by the way? What, what is that? I got, I got some fruit juice. Um, trying to make sure that I don't die from something inside my body not working. So yeah. I've been trying to eat and drink a little bit healthier. Well, speaking of drinking, yeah. this is a drinking web show, so we hope you guys uh, join us for this crazy bar conversation, like always, and have yourself a uh, nice adult beverage, and uh, please drink responsibly, by the way. One thing we also want you to do is click that like or subscribe button down below. It's lots more fun on this web show. And on Thursdays, kicking back with Jersey Joe, we got some bad New York City and funny New York City bar stories. These are bad experiences or funny experiences people had in New York City bars, from the guy who went to a bar that reminded him of a set from Married with Children, to another guy who says his beer tasted like cigars. The bar you want to stay away from the bad experiences, but funny ones Thursday on Kicking Back with Jersey Joe. Look at that, bar talk in this show, bar talk in that show. It's a, eh, you know, it's a good conversation, a good place to have a conversation, the bar. Gee, I wonder what our actual death experience is going to be caused by. I don't know, good question. You come in before that, you think you and I all end up going together. Yeah, that's possible. <laughs> well, let's not put that on the to-do list, right? Let's put on the to-do list so to meet here each and every week. Jersey Joe here, Eye on the Box, and you watching. Thank you very much. Thanks for your comments. Thanks for joining us. See you next time, I